From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. I want to welcome to this Cube Conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube here in Palo Alto Studios for a great startup showcase preview. Rakesh Narasimhan, president and CEO of Anishian. Um, great company, hot startup, really getting a great tailwind with COVID and their technology. Rakesh, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for the opportunity, John. Great to be here. So you guys have a very strong company, a lot of growth, a lot of action happening around public private sector. Uh, obviously with cloud scale, we're seeing a lot of benefits with the COVID and now the growth plans coming out of COVID as people start to think about post COVID recovery. Um, cloud is a big part of it. You guys have been taking a big success playbook out of cloud scale. <laughs> um, take a minute to explain before I get into some of my questions around what you guys are doing and uh, your value proposition. Talk about the company. Um, what do you guys do? What's the purpose? Why do you exist? Great, um, thanks again. Uh, good to be here uh, talking about Anishin as well as the story of growth here. Um, our primary value proposition as a company uh, is really helping customers both in government as well as commercial achieve compliance and uh, security in the fastest time possible. It's, lots of companies are going through digital transformation, but you know, public sector, there's a lot of uh, speed that they require in terms of moving their applications. People are trying to go to the cloud. And when I talk to customers, I hear three things all the time. A, they're trying to move to the cloud. B, they're trying to, you know, remote was always there, but COVID has dramatically compressed the time in which everybody has to provide the functionality right now. And lastly, securing the apps and data. Those are three priorities we hear from customers all the time. Anishin as a company is able to dramatically get you time to market and time to value on both your compliance and security needs. That's really why the company was formed. Uh, this is a space where primarily most of the people are manual time task, and it's a classic software play to basically go transform that and automate that. Rakesh, great, thanks for the overview. Get in, get, in, get in and talk about the value proposition specifically that you guys offer. Are you guys targeting the enterprise? Is it public sector? Is it both? What's the target audience, target customer that you're going after and why would they want to engage with you guys? Yeah, so I, th I think it's a, it's a timely uh, space where there's a lot of commercial software as a service companies who are trying to expand into the larger government market. And to do that, you got to be compliant on some sort of standard, if you will, right? And so let's take an example, it's FedRAMP. Uh, so we've taken a ton of uh, SA, you know, SaaS companies, if you will, who are trying to get into the market and we get them within 60 to 90 days into a compliance. So in, in, in the time of a quarter, a SaaS company can enter a federal market uh, with the ability to sell it. And the cost of doing it is recouped in the first deal that they make. So time to speed and time to actually be able to go expand into a vertical market is one of the main value propositions on the SaaS side of the house. Also, uh, we have a lot of government agencies who are trying to move to the cloud. And so if you look at Amazon, uh, they're trying to get a lot of customers who are going to adopt the cloud. We provide a pre-engineered solution that integrates all the, the, the value of partners along with Amazon, and bring those applications from government agencies to the cloud. So on both sides, both getting public sector companies or, or agencies who are trying to get to the cloud, as well as SaaS companies who are trying to get to, you know, to a new market. We're just enabling and accelerating the time to market. That's a huge ROI right away. It's an amazing value proposition. You're on both sides of the fence that you're playing, um, you know, kind of the in-between moving people around back, help and forth, helping people back and forth. If I get this right, so let me just see if I get this right. So you guys, so I'm a, say I'm a uh, fast growing startup. I'm born in the cloud. Amazon has a zillion of partners that are, sure. that are kicking butt in there doing great. I say, hey, I want to get into the public sector or the public sector or an agency wants to work with a startup. Then the old world was, you got to go stand in line, get certified, do all those hoops to get certified FedRAMP or whatever. And then, or hire staff to go, you know, be government sector. And then that was the old way. You guys essentially shortcut that by saying, you provide a platform to allow me, the customer whose enterprise customer has a SaaS, get into the market faster. Is that right? That's right. I think a big portion of that is, uh, you know, there's really two kinds, right? People who are trying to do it themselves or people who are trying to get consultants to tell them what to do. Our value proposition is 
why are you, like you're in a business to do something very specific, getting you secure and compliant is something we can do for you with time, money, quickly. But the most important thing is it's not a one and done thing, right? So this is, this is where we come in and just like what the email security business used to be, right? People used to run their own email servers to run their email. Well, who does that anymore, right? Most of them have actually gone out. We do a similar example of getting compliance for other companies and we actually do it through software and we have an ongoing relationship to make sure that their current compliance is maintained, but also other compliance regimes that come up, we're able to help them upgrade yeah. through the cycle. Yeah, that's a great point. Well, you know, the cloud scale is not one and done, it's one and continue because you have iteration, yeah. you have day two operations, you have all these kind of cloud ops that require that kind yeah. of ongoing, um, I won't say maintenance, it's not maintenance anymore. It used to be maintenance. Now it's like, you know, it's operations. It's a well, new feature. You're doing invention, but you, it's, you're not done. Yeah. You have to keep evolving as the market evolves. We've got customers not paying us for just one thing that was done three years ago. We got to keep that refreshed and also more current and up to date, which is one of the benefits of cloud, right? You can move quickly, but you can also bring new things to the market pretty quickly as well. So they benefit because of the inventions we're doing and the partner ecosystem around us. Yeah, it's, it's a classic case of software, new marketplaces that exist, new ways of doing business. It's a whole new yeah. wave. It's a old ways getting getting trashed, in my opinion, new ways coming in fast. Well, so, I think you have to evolve, right? Architectures evolve, yeah. time goes on and new things come up, right? Well, so hybrid, to... hybrid cloud too is forcing this big time because you have now environments and, and organizations shifting now, multiple clouds, multiple vendors um, integrating quickly. Huge challenge. I think it's a fair point, John, but one of the things I always remember is, you know, you have to be effective first. Yeah. And then once you're effective, you can become efficient. In other words, it's good that customers have an option to have a software platform to go get their compliance and security needs done. And if you can do that on one cloud, that itself is a win. And then you can go to multiple clouds and, you know, AWS has been a great partner to make sure that they're making everything available for us to be able to build a great solution on the platform and its ecosystem around it, which helps us basically be the equivalent of, you know, standing on the giant, you know, giant shoulders, if you will, to bring that value to the marketplace. So what do you guys do that's unique uh, for inside Amazon, for Amazon startups? Um, why are you guys successful in helping these companies do the FedRAMP thing? What's the big uh, secret sauce? Yeah, so there's actually uh, three separate parts to it. Uh, first is we actually have worked already with a fair amount of, um, folks who actually provide functionality on Amazon. So for example, a FedRAMP solution might require us to work with a SIM vendor, uh, an endpoint protection, as well as container security, if you will. So we've worked with vendors who already work on Amazon AWS and pre-integrated that into the environment so that when we go deploy with a customer's application, that's not something they have to worry about. It's already there. The licensing is there, the deployment is ready. They don't have to do any of that. So that's pre-integration if you think about it. Then there's the automation provided by our platform itself. We have a platform that we deploy into the account. And so all the innovations that we are doing about taking that integration and then automating all the requirements for the security controls that are part of the standard, such as FedRAMP, for example. So once you do the pre-integration and you have software innovation from us, and the third part we provide is a, a actual SecOps service, which is based on the platform, we actually help the customer not have to worry about the threat hunting, threat mitigation itself. It's, it's a service available all the time. And so the combination of those three things, it turns out is sort of the biggest headache for customers, whether you're in commercial yeah. SaaS vendor or if you're on the agency side, we are sort of a one-stop shop to get you there in compliance. Yeah. Similarly, we have an offering called Secure Cloud. And, and what happened is a, a little story for you. We started doing this compliance automation. Uh, and as we were doing them, a lot of commercial companies looked at that and said, you know what I like about what you folks are doing? You sort of standardize the way we deploy a secure environment. So, you know, we like the, the security guys in our organization like it because it complies with the security controls. The business guys like it because you're doing it in a certain budget and time. The dev guys like it because we're not telling them what to do. We have created a secure environment and they like developing in it. The DevOps folks are the ones who really benefit from having to make sure that security guys like it, it's in budget and the developers can be productive. That aha moment actually came from customers to it. They said, I like what you did for compliance automation. Yeah. 
can you do that for other applications? And that's how we got into the secure cloud business as well. Yeah, it's, it's funny how these uh, aha moments happen because you solve the need and people go, hey, I want more of that. And I, and I see why software vendors would want to turn to you to help sell into that huge federal market. It's just, it's so much faster, yeah. it takes the pain away. They get in market fast. Yep. It's, it's a cloud value proposition, get in quickly and then you know, get a position and keep solving value there. So I got the question, if that's, if, if that's happening, which it is, who are you disrupting? What industries and business models are you changing or uh, replacing? What's the, what's the big disruption? I, I see, you know, in the, in the compliance side, there's, there's really two, two sides, there's compliance and then there's security, right? In the compliance side, I see really people who are trying to do it themselves. You know, that still is a large portion of the market and they haven't realized that, you know, this is not a core competency of ours. We just need to have somebody else do this for us. I think that's generally mostly who we run into. And over time, they don't get the FedRAM or PCI compliance and then they come to us. We get a lot of customers who come to us because they've tried and failed. And so they want to get on with us because of our growth in the marketplace. So that's one. And second is a larger market is really in the compliance side, historically has been a lot of consulting companies. They, they ship bodies to your uh, company and that's what they do. And that's for a particular FedRAM compliance regime. The next year you want to do something else, guess what? We're going to go hire more consultants to that market. So we basically provide a software approach to automating the, the need for the customer have basically started really disrupting that market against traditional competitors, if you will. So that's compliance. And the secure cloud, it's not very different. If you can imagine going back 15, 20 years, if somebody told you that the way you will buy compute storage and networking is you will go to a website and you'll sign up with an account and procure it, people would probably run you out of the room at that time because they'd be like, hey, I'll buy hardware from one of the vendors, they'll ship, they'll come to my uh, building, they'll rack them, stack them. Well, that changed dramatically over yeah. time because of the acceleration. We're doing something similar, which is, why do I need to assemble an endpoint solution or a firewall or something else? And by the way, by the time I do this next year, there's a new vendor saying that they, they have something better, right? Yeah. So we have done something similar. The journey we're on is to pre-integrate, pre-provide functionality from the best vendors out there so the customer's applications can be in that environment, benefiting from all that invention, the ecosystem and the cloud provider themselves, instead of having to worry about, am I getting the right endpoint solution or firewall or SIM? And do I have it configured properly? And is this the best combination of things I have? We basically provide that functionality so that they don't have to think about that. It's interesting. And that reflects in, in the results we're having. Frankly. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's amazing disruption. I think you brought up earlier, DevOps efficiency and security and your application. In a way, you got Dev, the DevOps ethos that now DevSecOps is being applied to compliance. I mean, basically yeah. it's, you're a compliance automation platform software, but DevOps and security ethos, DevSecOps is just the enablement for you. It's just the playbook, right? Is that, is that kind of how it is? Because DevOps applies to all verticals now and security is needed. I think, I think it's much more, you know, it's here present, right? Which is a, a, an issue for most organizations, enterprise, you know, agencies and government or commercial vendors, if you will. That whole market, uh, this market has gotten up because uh, the ability to get things into production is a big need out there. And to do that really well and effectively, you need a great DevOps organization. Think of us as sort of a DevSecOps in a box that we can deploy and that helps the customers get to market faster, right? So, so speed is important. Mm -hmm. So certainly the effectiveness of that is important, but at the same time, do you achieve the compliance? Do you achieve the security is an even bigger bar, if you will. And, and in today's uh, industry and marketplace, you, you can't talk about a digital transformation cycle and talk about a three-year project, if you will. I think it has to be shorter and they have to actually see the return pretty quickly. And that's yeah. primarily the reason why, if you think about a nation story, we're solving a business problem, but the way we're doing it is actually provided for the DevSecOps and DevOps folks, if you will, but it solves a business problem for the companies, whether you're a commercial or government. That's the reason why I think it's much more interesting. Yeah, and I think one of the things that's interesting with cloud is you need to have that automation 
and you're essentially taking care of the compliance problem that everyone has because once the SaaS vendor gets in value proposition where they're growing, they start to get customers that say, hey, do you have a pen test? Can I get a sock report? I mean, all these little kind of things start emerging where they got to go build it and go, wait, right. we, didn't, we didn't get that. Wait, what do I got to do? I got to have that built in and deliver that every time, not a one-off. It used to be you do a pen test or you do some things and you, you're done and you lock the code down. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I, th I think it's a, it's a continuous thing, right? It's yeah. not just one and done, but also it's, it's not just one and done, but this is not static. It's very dynamic. The, the apps are changing, the functionality is changing, the things it interacts with are changing. That's the beauty of the cloud, right? You, you have all this ability to be able to move faster, but with it comes certain responsibilities, if you will. And so we take our job seriously to ensure that while you're innovating with your application out there, our job is to make sure that we're keeping up with you, not just in securing you and making you compliant, but also keeping you compliant so that you're not running afoul in terms of all these other standards, if you will. That's one benefit of it. Frankly, at the end of the day, the customers benefit the most, right? Because you can better functionality faster. And frankly, it's driving pricing as well. And so that's got to be a larger yeah. uh, issue for the industry in general, frankly. Awesome, great insight, Rakesh. I got to ask a question. If I'm the customer, when do I know it's time to call you? Is there uh, markers or signs that, you, that are clear? That I say, well, I need to call immediately. That's what something's going down here. When, what, think, what's a tell sign? Two tells are really one is you want to expand into market. You want to grow your business revenue. If you want to add more revenue in a large market like federal government or public sector in general, then we're the fastest way to get you there. Just revenue, right? So if you want to make more money, uh, we can get you there faster, quicker than anybody else and, and keep you there, by the way. The other tell is if you want to stop time in terms of investment in trying to figure out how to assemble the best of breed, if you will, um, you know, a lot of the you know, Amazon sellers, in fact, they, they bring a lot of customers to us where they bring us to saying, here's the fastest way for you to get secure quickly so that your application can go out to the marketplace and scale and still be secure. So in both sides, both in the compliance side and automation, as well as in the secure cloud side, the clear tell is when people are trying to grow their business and they're trying to secure while growing their business. Both of those are clear tells when we get brought in. Yeah, so on the business logic is simple. I want to go in a new market and the other side, I got my product ready. I got to get the products up to speed and standardized with all the compliance. Sure. Right. Awesome, well, great conversation. Um, thanks for coming on and sharing the story and the value proposition and the business model and all the secret sauce. Um, final uh, question, I'll just give you the last minute here to put a plug in for the company. Um, what are you guys looking for? Are you guys hiring, state of the company? Uh, any vitals you'd like to share in terms of status, momentum? Take a minute to uh, put, get the plug in. Great, um, th thank you for the opportunity, John, more than anything else. Uh, happy to share the story and the growth at, at Anushin. Um, if you're a customer that is contemplating doing any sort of compliance, or you're trying to figure out how to get secure pretty quickly with a pre-engineered platform, uh, we're, we're one of the best guys to be around in, 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 the, in the marketplace. We work on Amazon and AWS uh, folks get in touch with the AWS rep or get in touch with us directly. My, I can give you my email. It's my first name dot last name at anishin.com. Go ahead and send me a mail and we'll help you with your compliance and security needs as well. Growing like crazy, you know, in the middle of a pandemic, we, you know, we were lucky. We, we live in professions where we're able to do things remotely, not everybody else's. We, but we are able to take care of our customers and secure them and keep them compliant. Phenomenal growth, we're growing like crazy in terms of our business as well as people. Send me a mail if you're interested in joining the company or want to be a partner with us, happy to help you with that, okay? Rakesh Darasimhan, President and CEO of Anishin. What a great business model, helping companies make money faster by getting into new markets if you're a cloud scale. Great, great uh, success, thanks for coming on. Thank you, John, take care. Okay, this is theCUBE Conversation, I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.